Welcome. Welcome to this uh, open session on the city's mission, the Horizon Europe city's mission. I can tell you this is going to be the best open session of the Research and Innovation Days. In any case, we have the best panel of the Research and Innovation Days with Hannah gronkiewicz Valls. Hannah, hello. Uh, Hannah hello. is the chair of the Mission Board on Cities uh, and therefore very much yes. driving it. Hannah, you welcome. We have Kate Rayworth, professor uh, in Oxford, one of the leading economists of our time. Kate, I'm delighted to have you. And Kate is also um, uh, well known for the donut economy. We'll come back to it in the city's context. Lina Galvez Munoz is a member of the European Parliament right now, but is also a professor in history, was also acting in science in, in Spain, and has a, a lot of interaction, has had a lot of interaction with the city's mission. So, uh, Lina, warm welcome. And we have um, also a, a, a second mayor, because Hannah was mayor of Warsaw also in her career, I didn't say that, who is Mohamed Ridwani. I don't know, Mohamed, if you're with us already, um, mayor of Leuven. Uh, one of uh, the six runners-up for the iCapital Prize, which will be handed over tomorrow. So, in principle, Mohamed, you are mayor of a particularly innovative city. I hope you will be able to join us shortly. So, the, the panel is about, uh, Hannah, it's about showcasing the city's mission. Uh, we will um, have a, a few minutes of introduction for each of you, uh, that you tell us a little bit how you see uh, our cities develop, and how you see that research and innovation can help develop clean, climate-neutral uh, cities as we move forward on the basis of the city's mission. But I'm, I'm sure that um, Kate and Lena will provide a slightly broader picture, which is very welcome. Once we've done that, we then, I will then have a Slido and I will see questions from, I hope, a very numerous uh, audience in this open session. And I will try to feed them back to you in a useful manner and in a good conversation, I hope. Voilà, we have more than 40 minutes ahead of us, and I suggest that we kick it off immediately. Hannah, I hope your connection works, and I would hand over to you. Oh. It does. Can you hear me? Absolutely, Hannah, we do. Please go okay. ahead. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for invitation, first of all, and I am coming to the merits. So uh, I can say that uh, uh, we are working uh, our mission board for 12 months, and uh, we decided in the beginning that... Uh, uh, the title of our mission will be 100 climate neutral cities by 2030 by and for the citizens. And this component of citizens was very important through these 12 months, during these 12 months, because the concept uh, is to support, promote and showcase uh, the 100 European cities in the systemic transformation um, to, towards uh, climate neutrality. And we hope that you, they will serve as a good example uh, for the other cities, in the, of course, in the future. Uh, all the time, we took care about uh, citizen engagement, uh, and uh, we think that the, that the, uh, per, uh, the system engagement will be accompanying the whole pr procedure, the whole, from the beginning to the end, uh, it means to the impact assessment, uh, from the um, uh, conceptualization uh, through uh, implementation to the impact assessment. And uh, because uh, we think that the, the citizen engage, uh, uh, engagement helps bridge the gap between the market, social and uh, science, and uh, I should say that uh, we participated, uh, we, I mean the member of the board, at least one of us, and in the 13 events which took place for the last 12 months uh, in many countries, of course, European countries, uh, from uh, west to, to, to the east, from north to, to east of Europe. Uh, so um, what, do we, um, what do we expect? What, what, are, what is our ambition? Our ambition is uh, to do much more than traditional research and innovation uh, program because the introduction of a climate city mission is a radical new way of achieving this the climate neutral by 2030. It's important to highlight that uh, it's planned to uh, achieve this uh, climate neutrality 20 years earlier than it is planned for whole Europe. Uh, so uh, we would like to promote uh, also the city investment 
targeting multiple sectors such as governance, transport, energy, construction, uh, wastewater treatment, recycling, circular economy, and using, of course, the uh, digital technologies because it's also very important. Um, we hope that uh, um, we change also certain uh, attitudes uh, of, as well of ourselves, habits, uh, existing schemes, just to create a holistic, uh, more systematic approach to this very important subject, I, like is climate, neutral, climate neutrality, because it's the, the, it's the problem of life and, and death in a certain way, if the climate change so quickly as it happens now. So we hope that this approach will be, this attitude will be changed by, by the local governments, national governments, as well as Europeans. So I hope that everybody will play to one goal. Um, and the mission can also contribute both to the economic recovery, which will be very important after the uh, COVID-19, and also to deliver, it will facilitate to deliver the European uh, Green Deal. And quickly about key uh, elements of our proposal. The first proposal is a new mechanism. It's climate city contract, uh, which uh, will be signed uh, by the mayor on behalf of the local government and regional and national uh, governments, as well uh, by the commission. We hope that it will be a lot of innovation within the, this content, this con uh, content of the of this uh, contract better regulation, integrating financing, and uh, each contract, it has an individual, I would say, pattern. So uh, also many people in the meantime, also in the European Parliament, asked me uh, how much money we need for this, for this, uh, for this uh, project. So uh, according with the financial analysts, which we use uh, the advice, it will be for 100, 400 cities uh, on average with 100,000 uh, citizens, it will be about uh, 96 billion euro for achieving climate full neutrality for the whole project. So for many years, of course. So um, we hope that um, also will be uh, up to 10% of the resources allocated, allocated to climate actions in the next MFF towards the objective of the city's mission, our mission, and also a recommendation to mobilize up to 10% of the resources allocated in investing in climate actions. And also we would like to have, a, to invent a mission label that would provide selected cities with preferential access to technical support and various financial instruments. I would say that our concept is quite com complex. And uh, also we also work, already work on the selection of the cities, the process, procedure, how it will be. Uh, first of all, the preliminary call uh, later on, um, we think that it will be the, the selection, which will be related uh, um, with the um, preparedness of the cities, but also uh, with the um, uh, with the um, stage and how they advance, and also we hope geograph ge geography geographically balance. So uh, this is uh, our uh, our key elements. Of course, if you have to know more, uh, I I encourage everybody to read our report, which was already published. That it can be. It can be, of course, um, uh, it has more details. Uh, it's very, I would say that the report is very operational, it's very concrete, yep. uh, and and uh, really um, you can you can know more because I know that our time is limited, so I don't want to 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 take uh, to to tell uh, other issues which were in the report. The most important is, I think, financing go governance and and uh, selections of the cities, which is uh, inside. And now, no, now we hand over this report uh, uh, yesterday, and we are waiting for the um, proposal of commissions. We deliver our proposals now. We are waiting for the proposal from the commission. Great, Hannah. Thank you very much. 
Um, indeed, the report was handed over yesterday to Maria Gabriel, um, Commissioner for Research. It's available on the website of the RNI days. And it's a, gr it's a great objective, Hannah, 100 climate neutral cities with and by citizens. And this will be a major contribution if, or rather when successful, to the 55% CO2 reduction target, which is now uh, the Commission proposal. So we, we will need to put significant resources in that mission. And I, I, I'm already, can you maybe prepare yourself for a non-slider question, which I wanted to ask you since you started to work, which is the following. If you were still mayor of Warsaw, would you apply for the contract? And would you make it as city? Not now. I will, I'll come back to the question afterwards, mm -hmm. but just for you to prepare. Kate, okay. I turn to you. Um, you have now uh, experimented with the donut economy uh, framework and concept also at city level. So how can you inspire the work of the city's mission? Kate, over to you. Thank you, Generic, and it's great to be back in conversation with you. So it's great to hear that there's uh, 100 cities aiming to be climate neutral by 2030 in the EU. I want to be very blunt and say I think the whole of the EU should be aiming for this goal because 2050 is a target of climate neutrality for the whole world. And it seems extremely uninnovative of Europe to accept that much of its country and cities would just come in at the last minute with everybody else. So I'm giving you a playful challenge. Europe should all be taking on this challenge for 2030 for climate neutrality. But it's good that there are 100 cities already leading on this. May the rest catch up as soon as they realize that is where innovation lies. So it's about climate neutrality, but I think the work we've been doing with donuts and cities tells us it's about climate neutrality and much, much more. So the donut, for anyone who doesn't know it, is a framework that says let's meet the needs of all people within the means of the living planet. And it's uh, very closely related to the sustainable development goals. But it holds us in this tension of, of finding ways that we've never found before to do this. And it has climate change absolutely central, top and center, but we need to go far beyond. We have downscaled this donut to work with cities around the world, starting in high income cities, because these are the ones with the biggest obligation to move fastest and furthest. And we began with Amsterdam. And I want to give you the question that we've been posing to these cities. And, and I invite people who are listening to listen to this question through the lens of their own city that they know and love. So how can your city be a home to thriving people in a thriving place while respecting the well-being of all people and the health of the whole planet? And this four-part question invites us to ask, what does it mean for the people of this place to thrive in terms of their own values, their culture, their history, their diversity, what does the good life look like and mean to them? And how far is their city from that right now? And what would it look like for the, this city to thrive in the ecosystem in which it belongs? Every city is situated in a unique location on planet Earth and must ask itself, what is this ecosystem of which we are a part? How does nature thrive here? What is her genius here? The forest next door is sequestering carbon dioxide and storing groundwater after a storm and housing biodiversity and cooling the air from the treetops to the forest floor. So how can our city not just aim to be climate neutral, but actually aim to be as generous as nature? Now, this biomimicry to me is the next level of vision and ambition and innovation for our cities. And that's local aspiration, thriving people in a thriving place. But as we all know, every city, especially the wealthy global north cities in Europe, are embedded in global supply chains and global relationships, drawing in materials from around the world. So how can our city respect the well-being of the whole planet, the clothes that people buy, the food that's imported, the electronic goods that people are buying? consumer goods, construction materials that have come from around the world. How can the city bring its consumption footprint on carbon, but also on nitrogen and phosphorus, on water, on land? How can the city bring its consumption footprint within planetary boundaries? That is a truly revolutionary goal because no city until now has taken on this goal. 
And how do we do it while we respect the well-being of all people? Who made our clothes? Who packed the food? Who shipped the containers with the goods we buy? And who takes the waste and disposes of it afterwards? So we need to ask very holistic questions. And on one hand, somebody might say, that's too big, that's too much. In which case, my re reply would be, these questions are with us all the time, every day, in every city. So let's bring them together. Now, we've created a city portrait for the city of Amsterdam, and they chose to launch it in April, the month where Amsterdam had its highest infection rate of COVID. And I know the reason is because the city mayors and directors said, look, we want to emerge from this emergency, but where do we want to go when we emerge? What is the vision that we are going to bring ourselves to steer us? And they launched the portrait to say, that's the vision of who we want to be. In fact, just riffing on Amsterdam as an example, they've already adopted the vision of being a city that's home to thriving, innovative, uh, sorry, it's a thriving, inclusive, uh, regenerative city that's home to citizens within planetary boundaries. Now that's a city that's already set its sight on a big goal. The question is, how do you get there? Amsterdam's already getting rid of all fossil fuel vehicles by 2030 and has set the goal of being 100% circular economy by 2050, which means by this 2030 goal that we're talking about now, in a decade, less than a decade, has to be well on the way of turning from being a linear city, right? Take materials, turn them into stuff and throw them away. The linear cities we have all inherited and turning that into a circular regenerative city. Now, it's very easy to do with a little piece of hose pipe. It is, of course, a completely different challenge to do in a city with food waste and metals and electronics and uh, construction materials and textiles. This is where Europe's innovation and research needs to be focused. How do we create circular economies that are also regenerative and just that create jobs, that create creative work for people so that people are brought from the old industries into the new. So I say, Europe, have the ambition of innovation. Don't just do it in a hundred cities. This is a Europe-wide challenge and responsibility given that Europe is one of the richest regions in the world. But it's the innovation that will make the transformation turn, new possibilities come through. That is what we know helps generate and regenerate and make the transformation we already know that we need. Kate, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the energy which you are bringing in this panel and the vision which is the one of the city of Amsterdam and which is you are discussing with a number of other cities. I very much believe myself that the, the conceptual framework starting from thriving people, which is I think the best entry point as we connect with citizens, is one which uh, the 100 cities might want to use. That would be something which they should, mm. in my view, all of them look at. There are alternative models, obviously, but that is one which uh, is now uh, demonstrated um, and, and, and tested. Let's see the rollout in Amsterdam. And you also uh, added, of course, the nature dimension, Hannah, which I know is also part of your consideration. Nature-based solutions will be part of the equation as well, including at city level. We, uh, I just want, before I, I give the floor to you, Lena, just say that uh, Mohamed Ridwani, you've joined us from Leuven. Uh, welcome. Uh, we'll come to you in a second because you are doing it on the ground and you will explain it uh, in a moment. But Lena, can I move to you? Uh, you, have very con you, you have followed the mission cities very closely. You, you, I know that from, from our interaction. And uh, I think, you are, think you, you are reflecting on how best indeed we could deploy Horizon Europe as, as a key platform to get the mission going. It will not deliver the mission, but it will get it going. And Kate was asking for research and innovation to make a difference. I think it can particularly make a difference in social innovation and experimenting. That's something which research is also doing. But Lina, over to you. Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, inviting me um, to this uh, panel. I'm very proud to be part of it. And I would like also to congratulate um, the chair of the City Mission Board uh, because she has, well, they have handled all the mission proposal to the Commissioner Gabriel. Uh, I know there has been a lot of work uh, behind that, so I, I really congratulate uh, all the whole um, the whole team. In, in fact, we have been following this uh, this mission. It was last year 
we were in Andalusia in Sevilla and Granada with Mr. Paquet and also was Julio Lugleras from the from the mission uh, the mission board uh, presenting us uh, the the first uh, uh, ideas. So um, I've been since then and even before a, a, a great fan of the the idea of the missions in in general, but specifically also about this one. Of course, I think this. Um, uh, I very much support this idea of investing in R uh, R and I in a holistic way, uh, which uh, with a clear, specific, and measurable objective. Um, that's why I think this mission, in particular, uh, with this goal uh, to have 100 climate neutral cities by 2030. Uh, taking into account citizens' involvement is a good example on how to land a mission, because the difficult thing about mission is how really to, 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 to land it. Um, I think this mission in particular is a unique uh, opportunity to link R&I uh, to the resolution of uh, complex social problems where the future is at stake, and, and these social problems are getting worse uh, now, we you know, and the solutions needed, and even more urgent now with the COVID-19. Uh, I think that this uh, health crisis and the economic crisis that is is with uh, are making cities uh, rethink themselves if they want to return to, to normality. I, I honestly think it's not the way to return to a, a let's say, an un socially unfair, economically unfair, um, predatory with natural resources normality. Um, um, I, I think we, we really need to move to, to a new uh, a, a normality. It's true that these circumstances are exceptional, but they reveal also the already existing weakness of the current city model and also to the economic uh, model. I'm, I'm a great follower of Ked uh, Donald. Uh, economy. I'm, uh, well, uh, Mr. Bacchese already, I'm an economic history professor and a feminist economist myself. So I have spent decades now uh, criticizing the, the economic, uh, the, the way we teach economic, the, the way we analyze economic. So I very much align and I hope this is, is an opportunity really also to change things. It is true that there are great now opportunities. The one in Amsterdam with the uh, economy, but also now Paris. Is leading this uh, La Ville de Cardaire. Uh, so there are uh, interesting initiatives, and, uh, and I hope uh, this 100 city could, could share a lot of experiences that would be of a great value of all of us. Uh, of all of us. Um, uh, it is obvious that we need really to be very innovative to bring about uh, the necessary systemic change uh, that the traditional. Our form R R and I is not achieving. I'm not saying that we don't need to still obviously to invest in in frontier research and so on and so forth because it's important obviously. But uh, we really need to look with uh, uh, new eyes and at the necessity of emissions. It, it is. Um, and I think innovation uh, fundamentally involves creating platforms of this uh, um, a lasting collaboration between all actors national and regional governments, academia, private sectors, so society, organizations, or local governments, also legislators, of course, now, uh, to form solutions uh, driving an outcomes-oriented uh, uh, partnership within the needs of citizens at the center. And this mission has really the potential, I think, uh, to transform our current cities into new cities with less pollution, healthier, and with the best quality of life for the citizens. I hope also uh, with a lot of social innovation and also in care uh, uh, cities uh, center on people's uh, well-being and, and equality, uh, including gender equality, which is not always involved in the different proposals that are going on, but are much more centered in other aspects. But and now, and now, I think now with the COVID-19, all these care issues should be also at the front. We, we are talking all the time towards a twin transition, the digital and the green one, but I think we really need to look very carefully towards a third transition, which is towards a new organization of care, and uh, uh, obviously through uh, this social innovation. And just to finish, I don't want to monopolize any word here. Um, I think, obviously, uh, uh, is, uh, the potential is very great, but we really need, on the one hand, citizens' uh, involvement, 
not only for the best capacities, the best ideas, and the support, but also for budget support. We are seeing now, uh, let me be a bit critical here, uh, possible great uh, cut on, on the budget of, of uh, Horizon uh, Europe. Uh, but in fact, we really need the support of the, of, of, of the population of citizenship in order to say, yeah, we want our um, uh, fiscal resources going to, to, to research. So we really need the citizens, uh, the citizenship involvement in order to also to have uh, uh, sufficient resources to, 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 to face all the challenges that has to be uh, uh, answered with innovation and with uh, research. And on the other hand, also, we need a strong political support at all levels. I know there is a great support for uh, uh, research uh, and uh, for this part of the, the, the Commission, but we really need to, to have all the Commission and all the different uh, also administration uh, really involved in, in order to, to, uh, to achieve the uh, transformations that are included in, in this mission. We really need the, the whole commission, uh, I hope uh, we, we will convince that that we will work very hard uh, from the parliament in order to, to, to achieve this goal and also obviously to monitor uh, the development of this mission at the Horizon Europe. Thank you very much. Nina, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks for, for, for your last point. Indeed, delivering on the city's mission, and that's a bit the idea of the city's contract, is a multi-sectorial, multi-policy, and as you also said, multi-level of governance. Uh, there will need to be resources, not only from Horizon Europe, it will, I hope, make a big difference, but then also uh, at national, local, and other parts of the MFF will be key. And we need a whole of, gov a whole of government approach really to get it going. I have a comment from... Uh, Lambert from Nistelroi, uh, a former member of the European Parliament, uh, Lena, who um, uh, notes that this really is an area where um, synergies with structural funds will be absolutely key. And can I echo one last point, which, which, which was also said by, by Kate? I think the timing of the mission is particularly relevant because we are now part of this discussion on recovery and resilience. You, you mentioned care. And I think this is the, the city's mission is one additional platform to bring cities forward, not build back, but build forward, as we all like to say. Now we need to do it. Mohamed, you're doing it, aren't you? Um, so I would really be interested to, to, to hear you uh, on, on your experience. We met last time here in Orban huh, for the Innovation Lab. Unfortunately, today it's digital. You are one of the runners up for the iCapital Award. This is, uh, I think, known. Um, it's tomorrow. So fingers crossed for the sixth runner-up, including yourself. But why don't you tell us a bit how, how, how you've done it, and I know that citizens play a central role. Over Thank to you. you. Good afternoon. I have a, a little presentation as a guidance. I would like to congratulate the mission, congratulate the uh, EC for organizing this. It's so, so important that we inspire each other and to, that we try to find new solutions for complex problems, as I so a warm uh, hello from Leuven, a city in, uh, in Belgium. Uh, next, uh, so we are, um, next slide, uh, please. So Leuven uh, is a city that uh, is in fact very much concentrating on connecting people, as I put it. It's about, for me, in essence, it's about collaboration and leadership. Next. And uh, as has been put, Today we live times. We have some huge challenges uh, coming across socially, economically, ecologically, and we need to tackle them in an innovative way, um, in a way that we don't lose people. I think that's that's a big um, a big challenge. Next, please. Um, well, Leuven to introduce is a is a centuries old university city with a lot of uh, smart minds. Uh, we have a lot of uh, passionate people, we have a lot of culture, a lot of uh, engagement. Uh, next, please. Skip the next two slides. Uh, we have 171 nationalities, means that um, almost the entire United Nations uh, gathers here and, uh, and connects here. And um, at the basics of our approach um, is that um, what 
I try to do as a mayor, what the leadership in this city tries to do is get people to dream um, about common purposes that will enhance our well-being and that will enhance the prosperity in our city. This is how we made huge changes to our mobility, for example, to our public spaces, um, uh, how we put our climate policy in place. Next, please. Um, innovation is in our DNA. Since centuries, uh, we have been welcoming people that came up with new ideas, new solutions, uh, like uh, Erasmus, Mercator, uh, and so on. But um, our focus is when we innovate, it's not a gadget to us. We want to make the life of all our inhabitants, of all people, better. That's, uh, that's a big focus for us. And if I can summarize it, next, please. Um, we have three types of innovation where uh, we focus on. Um, you can uh, go uh, two slides further. We have governance and social innovation. Second one is the technological one. And third is the climate innovation. And we try to connect these innovations, next please, to again come to the central point, which is make life better in our city. Make sure that the quality of life increases. Next, please. And um, so if I speak about, uh, just shortly about these three dimensions, which we connect and which we lead to this uh, increase in health and well-being, Governance is key. The way we come to decision making is key. When I was, uh, I'm a mayor now since uh, one year and a half before I was deputy mayor. And since 10 years, I'm trying to put new models in place where we try to have um, all cornerstones of our local society included in some kind of shared decision making process so that the buy in for difficult decisions like new circulation plans, circular economy, a new way of, uh, of consumption, we have the biggest buy-in you can imagine. And to do this, in fact, the way to get there is um, to have aligned leadership behind common goals, to get the leadership in our knowledge institutions, companies, pioneering citizens um, at the city administration working together in a systematic way. We have, like if we come to climate, we have what we call Leuven 2030. It is a new governance model which is put above all these partners where more than 600 um, companies, citizens, uh, governments, uh, all kinds of organizations and NGOs collaborate in a roadmap for a roadmap that we have designed towards climate neutrality. They all collaborate together, put resources in there, budget in there, and we get it done together. Few examples of results. Just in the past three years, the number of cyclists increased with 40% in Leuven. It's amazing. Leuven is increasing in terms of the number of citizens, employment, students, etc. The CO2 emissions go down. Even though we are growing, CO2 emissions go down. And I can give you a lot of positive effects, and in the end, it leads, we understand that, and that's where I, will, uh, I would like to, uh, to conclude, and that's also my main message. Um, we see that uh, it gives you know, better health, clean air. We see young people uh, like establishing companies in, uh, in all kinds of economies that are new green economies, circularity, and all that you want. And to me, the secret, well, secret that I would like to share with everyone, and that is also in the model of Professor Raworth and the, and the ex-mayor of uh, uh, Warsaw, is that um, we need to reinvent the concept of the we. We need a modern kind of we, us feeling, where we collaborate so closely, where we respect each other, where we invent new ways of governance, to tackle the most complex problems of our time, to do it in a just way, in a way that it leads to a new kind of well-being and a new kind of, uh, of prosperity. And indeed, we are one of, uh, to conclude, the runners-up for tomorrow. I'm so happy about that, that we are already in the final. I really hope uh, that we can, uh, we can continue our mission to be one of uh, 
Europe's uh, labs of the future and that we can contribute really to, uh, to solutions that are much needed today. Thanks. Great. Mohamed, thank you very much for, for sharing uh, your, your success uh, and this ongoing success. Uh, you, you, can, I, can I put one direct question to you immediately? A short reply, please, for all of you. So, would you want to be part of the 100 uh, climate neutral cities by 2030? Can you deliver on that? I think it should be our mission to be there, our duty. This is what we do every day. Very good, very good. And Kate, uh, connected to that, I think the 100 cities, if they pick it up and if they start delivering, I mean, my, my view would be that there will be a race to the top and this will spill over to many other cities because as Mohamed demonstrates, the quality of life out of the effort is amazingly perceptible and people want that. But we'll see that. So, I move back, Hannah, to my question. Do you, yes. do you, will, will Warschau, would, would you be, would you as mayor of Warschau go for the city's mission? Um, first of all, I would like to say that uh, for the last 12 years when I was the mayor, uh, we changed a lot. Uh, I mean, we, we, we changed the uh, buses for electric buses. We changed, we, we are constructing underground. We, we, constructed incinerators, so these things which are important from this point of view to get the climate, climate neutrality. And of course, we had also many bikes, as it was not before, as for example, in Leven or Amsterdam, where they, there is a custom to, to bike. So, but um, this, our uh, project, uh, our mission uh, has a possibility also for districts in the big cities. Uh, I think that big city uh, in, a, in, a, in this geographical place where we are, so Ms. I can, from a communist country, we are very difficult to decarbonize, uh, de decarbonize our economy. So we should think what is realistic. So uh, also is composed of 18 uh, districts. The other cities like Dinsk or Krakow for the others, they are also uh, composed of a uh, uh, certain amount of, city, of uh, districts. So I would choose the district to make realistic to become uh, climate neutral in 2030, because I'm afraid that uh, the whole big cities in our region, it would be difficult. The smaller cities, okay, medium-sized cities also can deliver, but uh, uh, whole city, it means two million people, and the big uh, and the capital city, it will be difficult to have uh, to 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 reach this. However, I don't know. Maybe current mayor is more ambitious than I could be, and uh, he, 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 he can afford it. So, uh, but uh, I I would like us, uh, to 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 say that we have in our project also the solutions for the big cities yeah. that they they can compete. Great, great, Hannah. Thank you very much for that very very lucid and realistic reply because it's it's indeed you should commit as a city and then credibly uh, be then launching it uh, but let's see let's yes, see what, how our will capitals be, will be will will be trying to to be part of it we as well we will be monitor we will be evaluated so exactly, we, we should exactly. it in a very serious way exactly big, exactly big big district is okay great hannah thank you i have a question on gender uh, Lina, I mean, you're, you're, you're pretty much a specialist uh, um, from, I mean, as a professor now. Huh? Uh, the question is uh, on, on gender perspectives in urban planning, which are obviously completely central. Uh, and it seems, uh, Hannah, that this is not completely visible in the report, but there is plenty of time still to inject it. Um, Lina, how, how, would you, how would you illustrate that need? Um, well, I, I, I agree that it's not uh, completely um, uh, included, and it is, um, in my opinion, um, it should uh, to be uh, changed, it should to be more clearly included, because uh, very much is center is very essential transition we have to, 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 to make the energetical one, the uh, decarbonization and the digital one, but we have to have in mind that uh, most of uh, labor force in the sector, both in energy, in uh, um, in digital, in transport, 
uh, even in building, if we are taking a new way of building and, and so on and so forth, is male labor force. So we will be creating uh, a lot of jobs and opportunities for men, but not for women. This is something that sh we should have in mind. So why we need to, 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 to develop also uh, infrastructures for care, also uh, uh, social spaces uh, uh, that um, make more uh, easier uh, to, to balance uh, uh, work and, uh, and life. And, and, and another thing I think we, sh we should also have, have in mind uh, when thinking from a gender lenses is uh, this idea of citizen participation, because it's obvious it is very important to, to, to have citizens involved, but there is something very important we have to keep always in mind, that if we take 10 years data, men ha have a much more uh, free time than women. They use also in a different way um, because they have more free time. They get more involved in these citizen uh, uh, initiatives in general. Obviously, there are differences regarding many, many issues. But for instance, in my own city in Seville, we have this uh, participatory uh, budget. And at the end, there were mainly uh, men of a certain age participating because they were the one having time to do it. So we have also to be noted on the way uh, people participate and the, and the way people um, could also decide what is important for their well-being. I agree with all of the rest and that we really need to change our our mentality. This is yeah. very much aligned with Kate uh, uh, Raggins, by the way. You know, thank you very much. We have a, a minute 48 left, and I can tell you that um, we will have to respect it. But let's indeed, maybe seamlessly, uh, Kate, from what you heard from Mohammed and, and now uh, the very, very relevant comment from Lina, how, how is your experience on citizens' engagement in, in 30 seconds? Have you seen this gender dimension as well? What could be one lesson uh, which the city's mission should retain? Well, I'm a mother of twins who are now 11 years old and I've pushed a pram of two babies around a city that's not built for it. So I, the gender dimension is very, very real for me. I love what Mohammed was saying about finding a bigger we and a form of collaboration. And in fact, now in the capital region of Brussels, led by the Secretary of State Barbara Tracht, we are working together with them to downscale the donut to Brussels and it's led by citizen, indeed resident engagement from the region. The residents themselves investigating the question I gave earlier. So watch out Brussels, it's all around you. You are surrounded by a deep donut collaboration with the residents of your region. Okay, thank you so much for that. For that. I, I hadn't realized, and I can tell you, I, I, will, I will connect myself as well. Uh, I will stop here. Um, we have uh, just 30 seconds left, so again, uh, Thank you very much to all four of you. I think I didn't promise too much. This was a great panel. Uh, thank you very much for, for the energy, for the ideas, for the models which you have uh, brought forward. We will uh, want to use them, Hannah, as we move forward with the mission. We'll come back to you on the mission, as you asked, very shortly. And on the website uh, of the days and of the mission, you will find all the relevant information. Thank you so much. It was a great panel. À très bientôt.